All right, welcome back everybody. I am at the pass here at Orange Beach this morning, and my goal is to find some sheep's head today. Don't know if it's gonna happen, but hey, we're out here, we're gonna give it a shot, so check it out. Let's get us a live shrimp out of here. I got fairly small shrimp today, and the reason is I'm sheep's head fishing, and I don't really want giant shrimp when I'm sheep's head fishing. Unfortunately, the place I get my feather crabs were out of fiddlers. All they had was shrimp, so that is what I am going with today. I just don't want giant shrimp hanging there. So hopefully that'll be a small enough shrimp. But hey, let's find out. Let's drop her down and see what happens. Ugh. We just get robbed. Yup. Hopefully that's not pinfish. Pinfish do some serious damage to your shrimp. They make it next to impossible to even use shrimp if they're around. What in the world did I just get hung up on? Whatever it is, I'm probably hooked on somebody's line that somebody's broke off and I'm caught on it. There it is, see I can reel it up so high and then it just gets hung up again. There we go, break that off, retie. And I've actually got a second rod, so we'll just go ahead and grab it throw it out for a moment just a heads up if anybody is curious i might end up leaving a bunch of these frisky fins sheep's head jigs tangled up and stuff down here at the bottom just an fy if you want to try to recover them probably end up leaving about 30 dollars worth of jig heads down here today i'm gonna backtrack over here a little bit there's a little less junk over this way i doubt that's definitely pinfish pulling on it right there those hits had pinfish written all over them still on there too There we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. That's a decent fish right there. That guy didn't hit like a pinfish there. Oh, come on, baby. That guy is a solid fish. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Get up, oh, get up, oh my gosh. Gosh, dang it. Oh man, that's a killer to lose that sheep's head like that. <sighs> man, that sucks. That sucks bad. I, I, I don't mind losing fish, but man, it sucks when you're, when you're out here and, and you, they're right there and I, that was a bad choice on my part. I screwed up. It's my fault that fish came off. I, sh I should have hoisted him up a little better. I've got to drop net I could have used, but bad choice on, bad choice on me. All right, let's see if I can redeem myself. Gosh, dang it. I can't believe I did that, man. I'll be honest, I don't have the best luck catching sheep's head. That might've been the, the one and only for the day. There we go. Come on, get up here. Oh man, that's a good one. Oh, that's a good sheep. Come on. Come on. There we go. <sighs> Redeemed myself after losing that first one. Oh man, what a relief. <laughs> All right, there we go. Redeemed myself but after losing that first one. <sighs> take some pressure off me. I'm excited to get this guy. We'll throw him in the corner and see if we can get some more. All right, that was the only sheep's head I got over the rail that day, as you saw. I unfortunately smashed that first one under the rail, and he came off. But it is what it is. Not the first fish I've lost. Not going to be the last. But now I just want to kind of get into how I go about going after sheep's head. The tactics I use, the gear I use. And before I even get into that, I want you to know I am no sheep's head expert by any means. But this is just how I go about it. Is it the best way? Probably not. Is it my way? Absolutely. And I just want to share that with you. So let's go ahead and jump into it. All right. First thing we're going to talk about is structure. Okay. Structure is super, super important when it comes to catching sheep's head. They're a fish that likes to hang around hard structure. And I've actually caught them off the beach surf fishing before with no structure around. That was 100% luck. They were just cruising through. 
and they happened to come right across my bait and they ate it. Sheephead like hard structure because that's where their food sources hang out. So that can be things like bridge pilings, you know, uh, piers, jetties, docks, just something that is hard and it's stationary. Th those are what attract sheephead. And that's because their food sources kind of end up getting attracted there. And we'll jump to the food sources now. I, I basically use two different baits for sheep's head. Number one, fiddler crabs, hands down. It's just, I, I think it's the best, most consistent sheep's head bait that I can get. When it comes to fiddler crabs, you don't really have to worry about bait size. I mean, they're gonna range from the size of a penny up to a quarter, with a quarter being a massive fiddler crab. You're mostly gonna find them in the size of a penny to a nickel. Uh, so just go to the bait store, ask for feather crabs. They're gonna get you hooked up with the right size of feather crabs. And number two is live shrimp. Now when it comes to shrimp, I'm pretty picky on the size of the shrimp I use for sheep's head. I, I want them fairly small. I don't want the big jumbo shrimp that I'm throwing out for reds or flounder or something like that. Um, I, I want fairly small shrimp because I don't want the, the opportunity to be there for a sheep's head to just bite that shrimp in half and then leave the tail end on the hook and then they're done with it. I'm not saying you can't catch sheep's head on just the tail end of the shrimp, but they're more likely to hit the live shrimp. So that's why I'm picky on the size of the shrimp I use. All right, now we're gonna jump into the rod and reels I use. Now, my go-to is the seven foot Ninja Tackle Dagger. It's my style of rod. It just fits me well. I like the way it feels. I like the way it, it fights fish. It's just all around, it's a great rod for me. It's a medium heavy, fast action rod. I think fast action is really important too when it comes to soft striking fish. You, f you feel the vibrations travel down the rod better. That that tip isn't super flexible like a slow action rod where it moves a lot. It, it's stiff and you can feel those strikes come down the rod, it, you feel it through the line. It's just much easier to, to feel the soft bite of a sheep's head when you have a fast action, stiffer rod. As, as far as reels go, this is a 2500. I'll, I'll use 2500, I'll use a 4000 size. Anything through there is fine. You, you don't need a giant reel to fight sheep's head. You don't need a five, six, 7,000 size reel. 2500 to 4000 is absolutely fine. Now, as far as line goes, I want braid. 100% I want braid. Braid is so much more sensitive than mono or fluorocarbon. You're going to feel those soft strikes a lot easier with the braid. And when it comes to my leader line, typically I will use 10 to 15 pound. That's that's all you need in fluorocarbon or mono. I, I use both interchangeably just depending on the day and just depending on what I've got tied up. As long as I'm not going over 15 pounds, I'm pretty Pretty confident I'm gonna get some bites up if the sheep's head are active. They can be a super finicky fish, so there are days where they're not gonna hit anything above 10 pound fluorocarbon, and that's what you're gonna to have to use. Or, or 10 pound mono, like I said, I, I, I don't think there's much difference between fluorocarbon and mono. Um, I, I do feel like fluorocarbon might be just a hair more sensitive than mono, but at the end of the day, there's not a whole lot of difference in them. Now when it comes to jig heads and terminal tackle, my, my go-to is going to be the Frisky Fins Swing Head Sheep's Head Jig. I, I like how that hook is super flexible. You can see the hook moves around really easy. All right, when it comes to fishing the Frisky Fins Sheep's Head Jigs, there's not much to it. It's pretty simple. You're going to take it. You're going to drop it to the bottom of the water, okay? So it's sitting on the mud, sand, whatever the bottom structure is made up of. and then. You don't want slack in your line. If you can see that slack, you don't want that, and you don't want to get it so tight that you pick it up off the bottom. Just let that sit there, reel a little bit of that slack. What I do, I just kind of pop my rod tip up and down so I can feel the weight of the jig head bounce off the bottom, and then I know I'm good. I just keep that line taut, not too taut, but not too loose. Just keep it right there and wait for a sheep's head to hit. Now, if I'm not using one of the Frisky Fin sheep's head jigs, I'm probably going to throw just your standard Carolina rig out. Nothing fancy to it. You just got that weight that slides up your main line with the bead there to stop it from slamming into the knot there on your swivel. Leader, same thing, 10 to 15 pound fluorocarbon or mono. Pick your poison. And then down here on the business end, you can see I've just got a size 2 bait hook. Just a real small bait hook. It's, I mean, it's the size of my fingertip. That's all the bigger a hook you need. Uh, and these are from Academy. I just go to Academy and buy them in bulk. I think I can get like a 50 pack of these for five bucks. So I'm good for a long time. And, and one other real quick option you can use, if you have very still water, like if you're in a bay and there's almost no water movement, there's nothing wrong with just putting a split shot on your leader line and dropping that down as long as it stays. Just a simple split shot, hook, feather crab. That's all you need to catch sheep's head, nothing fancy. 
Now, when, when you're fishing next to this hard structure, you want to be really close to it. If you've ever looked down off like a pier, and you'll see these sheep's heads. I mean, they are literally, I mean, this, if this is their nose, I mean, they're sometimes they are right up on those pylons. I've hooked myself here, get them undone. So let's say this is the face of the pylon. I mean, I want to be within a foot of that pylon. I don't want to be, you know, three, four foot away. I mean, yeah, they, they do swim around a little bit, but you have much better odds. The closer you are to that pylon, the better off you are. And another thing, if you're not losing gear, you're not sheep's head fishing. You, you are too far off structure. That, that is one thing when it comes to sheep's head fishing. If you're doing it right, you're gonna lose gear. I mean, you're gonna lose jig heads, you're gonna lose some line. Get up in that trash, that's where those sheep's head like to be, and you'll catch more sheep's head being up in that. Probably the most common question I get asked when I'm out there sheep's head fishing is, well, what's a sheep's head bite feel like? Well, sheep's head are called convicts for a reason, and that's because they're really good at stealing bait because they don't hit hard. So basically what I do, you know, I, I'm set up, I've got, I'm sitting down there on the bottom, got my jig sitting on the bottom, and if I feel something just slightly different, I mean, if, if I even think I might have remotely got a hit, I'm gonna go on ahead and I'm gonna lift that rod tip up off the bottom, okay? If I lift that up off the bottom and nothing's there, fine, just set it back down, you know? A couple seconds later, get another hit, if I lift that rod tip up and I feel some tension, I feel weight, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna drive that hook home. I'm gonna slam my rod tip off my ceiling there too. But like I said, if I feel that, if I feel that tension when I pick that rod tip up, go ahead and just slam it, man. Hook sets are free. Don't worry about hook sets. I mean, it doesn't cost you anything. Set that hook, if there's nothing there, oh well. You, you, you're not out of anything. Go ahead, rebate, drop it back down there. Now for the time of the year I go after sheep's head, I will start November and I will chase after them to March, you know, or in, into March, I'll still try to go after them. But once the water warms up, all the other species show up, just not a priority target for me. All right, guys, I, I know there's stuff I've left out. I know you still have questions, but that was just a real quick, brief rundown of what I could think of off the top of my head. So if you have any questions, make sure you comment down below. I will do my best to answer, but I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up. So until next time, I'll see you later.